The next question I received is from Gabriel Arredondo. Hello, Gabriel. Thank you very much for stopping by. And you ask, besides Akira Kurosawa's films and the Godzilla films, do you think anime films such as the ones by Studio Ghibli have been influential when it comes to Japanese cinema and cinema in general? I say this as a huge fan of the anime art form. It's my favorite aspect of Japanese culture, besides the aforementioned Akira Kurosawa's films and the Godzilla movies. I find Japanese cinema to be very enriching and very interesting. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, what a great comment and what a great perspective. Thank you once again for sharing this with me and with the rest of us here, Gabrielle. And to answer your question, uh, do you think anime films have been influential when it comes to Japanese cinema and cinema in general? I, uh, I admit that I, I don't have any type of of authority when it comes to speaking in terms of, say, the potential or possible reach of anime cinema or anime films in Japanese cinema as a whole. But I can speak perhaps from a, a wholly subjective personal standpoint. I admit up front that I am not the biggest anime expert and I am not the biggest manga expert. I know, I, I've read my fair share of manga, for example, but I don't know every manga. I'm not uh, uh, a huge expert when it comes to that. Same is true for anime. You know, I have seen a number of anime and I enjoy it very much. And I know that when I say I enjoy anime and when you say you enjoy anime, of course, I, I understand that that is uh, still uh, there are so many categories and subcategories within the anime medium as a whole. So uh, I, I understand that. And so there are many different types of anime stories and storytelling and genres, etc. Uh, but just as a general proposition, so I, I do enjoy this very much, but I wouldn't call myself an expert. And so that being said, I recognize, say, through my own interactions with Japanese culture vis-a-vis -vis watching TV, talking with uh, my friends and uh, a close circle uh, who aren't necessarily film enthusiasts, right? even people who aren't film enthusiasts or who aren't anime uh, experts or manga experts, they still... Uh, we still can talk about anime films that are really famous here in Japan. There are some that are very famous, like Studio Ghibli films. They are very famous. They are regularly shown on TV. And there are uh, oftentimes a lot of, of uh, documentary or look into deep dives into the Studio Ghibli phenomenon, etc. And so that has a... a uh, that that uh, feeds into... Uh, the extent to which Studio Ghibli films, as an example, are really uh, took hold. And people who, as I say, don't necessarily, uh, might not necessarily know cinema or might not necessarily know anime or manga, will, uh, more often than not, uh, the likelihood is very high that they will know Studio Ghibli. This is a big thing here in Japan. And so I would say that that, as an example, is where we see anime and also in, in other stores, anime and manga. I also mentioned, for example, now in 2021, uh, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer has become this huge, huge thing. And so, and even here in Japan, it's huge, absolutely huge. So that is, is a type of phenomenon that, in other words, people can uh, become a part of and become fans of, even casually, while not necessarily uh, being, say, uh, film enthusiasts or, or, or uh, deep, deep uh, anime enthusiasts or manga enthusiasts, you know what I mean? So even the casual fan is there. And I think because of that, or the ability of certain manga to reach the casual fan, I think that that's indicative of the power of uh, this type of uh, storytelling and entertainment. And it's something that's always been there. Uh, manga and anime, it's been there. And so it, it's, it's something that we see even in you know, anime TV shows. And there's this idea of nostalgia and expressing or exploring nostalgia. And uh, we have uh, re uh, rebroadcasts, uh, uh, reruns of, of, say, anime shows and, uh, and uh, reprints of uh, older classic manga 
uh, and it, this is constant. This is very constant. And so uh, this is my generalized way of saying that. Is I think it, it, it's maybe the influences. Uh, it's uh, quite quite remarkable and huge, uh, just in terms of say uh, general proposition on Japanese culture or modern Japanese pop culture. Uh, the it is absolutely huge, and uh, even people who might not necessarily know manga or might not necessarily call themselves uh, manga experts still know manga and the same is true for anime still know anime or certain stories of manga or certain stories of anime that's for sure now uh, I understand too that maybe uh, some stories that are very popular in Japan may or may not necessarily be popular overseas I get that and so sometimes the popularity levels depend on the region or the or the the place that they are uh, being told uh, so uh, then that becomes part of the fun um, and then also to get back into cinema I, I do uh, acknowledge or I do observe that there are these trends maybe I don't know how far, far reaching they are throughout the entirety of Japanese cinema but there are these trends of say for example uh, making live action versions of um, anime or manga stories in Japanese cinema and within that, there are attempts to try to mimic or replicate in these live action terms the art form of the manga, maybe through editing or through other visual techniques and the like. Uh, that's true, uh, not with all live action remakes of the sort, but it does happen once in a while or quite, quite frequently perhaps. And so uh, that is an example of how that, that uh, is affecting cinema. Now, whether those films themselves are successful, both artistically and financially, that becomes a whole separate conversation, of course. But uh, please note that that does occur here in Japanese cinema as well. Uh, and so, uh, and depending on how how popular they are, then it becomes uh, it becomes a uh, right, th then we might see more of that type of film or not. I should point out too that oftentimes too the the very financially successful films uh, we see a lot of anime films in that list, and so uh, that might be suggestive of just how far reaching anime films are in uh, the landscape of Japan uh, within, say, the, the film fan communities and also writ large just uh, in uh, Japanese society as a whole. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's my general impression. Again, subjective viewpoint, of course, but my general impression. Uh, but thank you very much for the great question. And uh, for anyone who knows anime and who knows uh, Japan and Japanese society and trends in Japanese cinema, uh, do you have any thoughts about this great question? Do you think anime films have been influential when it comes to Japanese cinema and cinema in general. I'd love to hear what it is you have to say. Um, okay, Gabriel, thank you so much, uh, my dear friend. It's always uh, great to great get uh, questions like this, and I really appreciate the time uh, that you took to stop by, and I hope to see you again very soon. And cheers.